When I first heard someone say, there's no J in Jesus, I was confused. And I thought to myself, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. I just thought it was ridiculous. I spent decades serving Jesus, going to prayer meetings, Bible study, church services, choir practices, reading my Bible, going to the Christian bookstore, trying to understand my faith. And this is just wrong. There's absolutely no way this could possibly be true. And then I found out it was true. And my ego took over. And I remember my emotions ranging from denial to anger, betrayal, and then denial again. And then I I said, you know what? They just don't want us to say Jesus. There's, there's something about his name. They just don't want us to say it. That's what this is all about. That's what I thought. And I was overwhelmed. Overwhelmed with emotions because... Fact is, I saw lives changed. My life changed because of the life of Jesus, and I was not going to deny my experience because of the letter J. So instead of totally abandoning my faith and denying the existence of the Bible, I became determined to understand the origins of the name of Jesus. My goal was to be an informed participant in any debate in any discussion about the name Jesus. So I decided to do my own research. And while researching, I saw a name, Yah, that was associated to an African princess. But why would an African princess, an Egyptian, have a Jewish sounding name? And at that point, I started thinking the Egyptians were Hebrews. But then I found out they were African tribes. But because I was taught to believe the religion of my ancestors was evil and associated to darkness and spells and witchcraft working against the spirit of God, I was hesitant to read anything about it. But I pressed forward and I read those books and what I found looked like the creation and Genesis. And in spite of my superstitions and my fears, I kept reading and I saw some names and words that looked familiar to me. And I thought to myself, what am I going to do? There's no J in Jesus. What am I going to do? And who am I going to pray to? Do I pray to the Almighty? Jehovah, Yeshua, Yahweh, God, Allah, so many names to choose, but should I try to understand the origins of these names and ancient spirits they might be associated to? Am I overthinking or am I trying to understand my faith? The scholars say the name was in the beginning with God, and I want to know the name of this ancient spirit that moved upon the face of the waters. But it occurred to me that in ancient times, the names of spirits were very sacred, and common people were forbidden to speak some of these names. So why would the slave traders give enslaved people a name with so much power. Well, in the modern times now, the name of Jesus has become commonplace. It's no longer sacred. And it's used in profanity. People just yell out the name. You know, <laughs> they use it whenever and wherever they want. You just yell it out, Jesus! <laughs> Any oh Jesus, any time, any place, any manner, in a way that they would never ever use the name Elah or Allah or Allah or the Prophet Muhammad. But then I thought again, 
why would the oppressors give enslaved people a name with power and authority? Am I overthinking again? Whatever the actual name of this ancient spirit, I'm sure the people who ever seek the name will find it. However, one thing I'm sure of, I'm sure this name had no European sounds or letters. So what do I do now? Now that I know there's no J in Jesus, I'm going to proceed. Because the only thing that has changed is the name, not his works, not his existence. The origins of my faith may change. I may need to understand what this power really is. But what if I were unable to speak or say this name? Would it matter? 